graph the following functions using your knowledge of parent functions and transformations. List the transformations above the graph for each step. You may not need to use all of the graphs for all problems. Do not use a calculator, graphing or otherwise. These problems 12, 13, and 14 are on the section that you are not going to have a calculator for. And um, we're just going to go through and um, graph these. Hard to see on here. I'll try to say the points, um, but it, it's, it's difficult because the graphs are so small here for me to show. And in fact, on this first one, I have a bigger graph down below here just so that I can kind of show you the one half on this picture before I try to put it on this tiny graph. And the first question is, well, what does the one half do to the function? We've got our parent function graphed over here. And uh, what the one half does is it's a vertical compression. And I'm going to put it down here on the big graph before I put it on that little graph right there. So we're going to take our parent function. And the vertex isn't going to change, but remember when we have a vertical compression, it impacts the y value of the function. So 0, 0 is going to stay the same here. But instead of and we're going to go one space, to, instead of going one space to the right and one up, we're still going to go one space to the right, but we're only going to go one half up. And instead of going two spaces to the right from the parent function and one, two, three, four up, we're only going to go half of four, which is two. And the points so far are zero, zero, one, one to the right and half up, and then the other point is 2, 2. As we go to the left, instead of going one space to the right and one up, we're still going to go one space to the right, but we're only going to go a half up. One half times one. And instead of going two spaces to the right and four up, looking at your parent functions, which you can't see on my screen right now, we're going to go two spaces to the right, but one half of four is two. And there is our picture. And again, it's still hard to see, I think, even on that one. And it's going to be very difficult on this one. But 0, 0. And then, again, it's one space to the right, one half up. One space to the left, one half up. And in fact, I think... I might just put some more graphs on here because I, I can't even get it to graph there. So there's our first one. Let's see if we can get the next one in here. At least it's a little bit bigger. So what's our next transformation? Well, we've got to go back and look at the problem. The vertical compress was the first one. So now what we have inside our parentheses is minus 3, and that means that we're going to go right 3. So again, I'm going to look at this graph just because it's a little bit bigger. I'm going to start with the vertex. So 0, 0 is going to become 3, 0. And then we went one, um, 1 and 1 half, so we're going to go over here to 4 and 1 half. And then our blue point, 2, 2, we're going 3 to the right. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. And then we're also going to have a point at 2, 1 half. And 1, 2. And hopefully you can see that one a little bit better. And that leads us now to our last transformation, which is going to be down 7. So again, I'm going to pull up one more graph here. 
to see if that will help us be able to see the actual transformation. And I think I can do that, although I really do need to see this picture. But as we look at this green graph, and we'll spread over a little bit more. I'm trying to make it blend in a little bit. It didn't, I didn't do very well. But the vertex, which is at 3, 0, is going to go down 10 spaces. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And as I go to the right on that graph, we've got that point one, two, three, four and a half. And then we're going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our other point is five, two. Well, 5, 2, we're going to go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's going to be at 5, negative 5 now. And we're also going to have a point then here, which is 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and a half. 2, negative 6 and a half. And we're also going to have a point of 1, negative 5. Again, I took all of the points from the green graph, and I've counted down seven to get this value here. And I hope at least that you can see that a little bit better than on the tiny graphs. And we'll see how we do on the next one in terms of whether I need to use these graphs again. But number 13, f of x equals negative 3 times x squared plus 4. We've got our parent function. And what we need to do from here is we need to write down the transformation. And the thing about this one I really, really, really want to stress is, is that the negative is separate from the 3. So negative is going to reflect over the x axis. It's outside of the function. If the negative one's on the inside, we, we would reflect over the y. And I think we're going to see that in our next problem. But we're going to have this point at 0, 0. That's our vertex. I'm going to flip everything over. So 1, 1 is going to become 1, negative 1. 2, 4 is going to become 2, negative 4. Negative 1, 1 is going to become negative 1, negative 1. And negative 2, 4 is going to become negative 2, negative 4. Sorry about that. But you get the idea. The negative again is separate from the 3. The 3 does something different. It vertically stretches the graph. And when we look at this one here, it's going to vertically stretch it by a factor of 3. And that means that the vertical distance, the y value, was going to change. So on here, There's our origin. It's still going to be 0, 0. And by the way, the 0, the y point of 0 in that, 0 times 3 is still 0. But our next point on our blue graph, which is this point there, close enough, is 1, negative 1. We're going to take that value of negative 1, we're going to multiply it by 3. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3. So that point is 1, negative 3. Our next point, 2, 4, 
2, negative 4. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. And I'm going to put that somewhere on there. It does go off the graph. On the other side here, we're going to go negative 1, negative 1. So negative 1, the y value of negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. And then negative 2, negative 4, negative 4 times negative 3. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So there's our vertical stretch. And then our last transformation in this particular case is the plus 4, and that's going to be up 4. So we're going to move all of these values up 4. From 0, 0, we're going to move it up 4. Our 1, negative 3, is going to move up 4. Our 2, negative 12, is going to move up 4, which I know it's hard to count on that. Our negative 1, negative 3, is going to move up 4. And our negative 2, negative 12, is going to move up 4. Let me get that piece of And better than expected, I started off rough on the blue graph, but the red one turned out better than expected. But as we finish here, f of x equals um, negative x on the inside of the function, negative x squared minus 5. Remember, we don't have to use all the graphs, on this, and on this particular case, we're not going to use all the graphs. But our first transformation is going to be to reflect over the y. That's what happens when the negative is on the inside of the function. And the thing is, when we draw the picture down here, it's not going to change. Zero, zero. If I can get it graphed. one is 1, 1. So when we do that, 1, 1, it's going to reflect over and land here. And 2, 4 is going to reflect over the y-axis and land there. And the same thing is what happens when we go to negative 1, 1. It reflects over and lands here. And negative 2, 4 reflects over the y-axis and lands here, but it just so turns out we got the same picture. The only other transformation on this particular graph is that we're going to go down 5, that's our minus 5, and as we um, draw this, we're just going to move each of those points down 5. I'm going to start with the vertex. So 0, 0 is going to move down to 0, negative 5. 1, 1 is going to move down to 1, negative 4. 2, 4 is going to move down to 2, negative 1. Negative 1, 1 is going to move down to negative 1, negative 4. And negative 2, 4 is going to move down to negative 2, negative 1. As you're finishing studying for your test, make sure you know the different transformations and where they go in an equation. Be prepared to write the equations. So you might want to go back and watch those videos again, study those practice problems again, look at your old practice again. But good luck.
All of the Algebra 2 teachers hope that you do well on your test tomorrow. Or whenever you're going to be taking it.